The Pinball Network is online. Launching. Just another pinball podcast. Hey, this is Just Another Pinball, episode number 35. My name is Joel Engelberth, and um, two big changes. Two big changes are going on right now. If you, have to be, if you happen to be listening to this podcast, I, for the first time, am doing video. So feel free to check out on the Flippin' Out Pinball channel. We have a video of this podcast. I'm hoping that'll do better from a longevity standpoint and be, people will be able to find this podcast a little easier um, otherwise, if you're listening in your car, enjoy it. And the second big change is this is now sponsored. It's sponsored by Flipping Out Pinball. So appreciate Zach and Nicole for letting me borrow games um, to stream and to talk about on podcasts, including the most recent game that I'm borrowing, which is James Bond. So I'm very excited to, uh, if I'm going to go big, if I'm going to start doing a video podcast, who better to get on video than the man himself, George Gomez is back. <laughs> I interviewed him a few podcasts ago, a few episodes ago, but he's here today. So George, thank you so much for setting aside some of your time to uh, to do this with me. Uh, hey, Joel, it's good. <clears throat> great to see you again. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, we had a great, we had a, we had a lot of fun last time talking about that pool. Oh, and, yeah. um, and, you know, we talk about where you want today. Um, and, and folks at home, you are uh, what you're seeing, this is my office uh, <laughs> in in the development studio at Stern Pinball. So this entire disaster, I, I'm sure you guys are gonna you're gonna oh. you're gonna do a NASA uh, yeah. satellite image, <laughs> yeah. like NSA uh, satellite image analysis to see what kind of uh, What's secrets. Back there? Yeah. yeah, with secrets you can glean from the um, the mess that my office is. No, it, um, it yeah, looks fantastic. Yeah, my toolbox right behind me. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm seeing a box of pop tarts. So you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a box of pop. You know, yeah. it's like you know, hey, you know, yeah. I find myself here at all kinds of hours of the day and night. <laughs> oh, I was just so. assuming the next licensed game was going to be you know breakfast themed or something. No, no, no that's awesome. Well, it, George. There's oh go ahead if you're no uh, that was a the big giant Deadpool oh, uh, yeah. you see him uh, mm -hmm. that was courtesy of uh, Mr Zombie Yeti um, he gave it to me when we finished the game um, yeah. so yeah. that's awesome that's awesome yeah and as you can see behind me I have my Deadpool Premium last time we talked I had a Deadpool Pro and I asked like hey how do you talk me into the Premium and to be <laughs> honest all it, all it took was I went to a bar downtown and I played. <laughs> I played the premium and I hit the uh, yeah. the left orbit one time. Yeah, that's and right. <laughs> that drop down ramp, I was like, all that's, right, I'm in. <laughs> that's the magic right there. Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's a great game. But um, well, we'll just, I don't know, we'll just dive on in. First off, you, Stern Pinball, just dropped some news this morning. Yeah. I mean, this wasn't initially in my notes by any means. Right, but, um, right. If you want to talk about that, it looks like there's some change in leadership. And if you want to talk about it or clarify. Yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, right, so... I think that uh, what people – I get the impression from some of the stuff I've seen online that people don't realize that Seth Davis has been the president of the company for a year now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, there's all the, all these all these conversations about what's going to change. Well, uh, honestly, uh, Seth has been the president for a year and, and whatever – you know, you haven't seen any like major radical, you know, turn the world upside down changes. And I don't I – don't, I don't anticipate that you're going to see those. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, look, we, um, our company is growing and our company is it's no surprise and, and, um, and we're doing great. And, and Mr. Stern is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm 67, he's 77. And, and at the executive team of this, you know, the company, I think, I think people don't sometimes don't realize that there's a whole team of us. It's not just me and Gary running the show. So, uh, you know, Seth, the president, John Biscaga runs uh, the sales and marketing group. Kevin Schechtel runs uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, Michael O'Donnell has been the, the chief financial officer. So I, that team is the team of people that run the company. Okay. And so every one of us owns a piece of the business, right? I own product development. And so whenever you see you know, new games, new concepts relative to whatever, accessories, parts, uh, insider connected, right? All that stuff comes from me and my team. Um, somebody's got to make it. That That's Kevin's job. Somebody's got to sell it. That's John's job. Mm -hmm. um, and, and somebody's got to coordinate the efforts and lay out the, the strategic vision of the company. And 
the strategic vision of the company is typically the role of the, the CEO. Uh, and, and in our case, uh, we've had, you know, we, we've had Mr. Peterson and, and, and Mr. Stern who own the company. And, and that, by the way, Gary's moving into the chairman's role. It doesn't mean that he's leaving or retiring or yeah. we, we, we would all love to see him snowboard more, <laughs> s- spend more yeah. time with his motorcycles, spend more time, uh, chilling out because he's, you know, he's, he's earned it and he's 77 years old, but it just means that some of the day-to-day stuff he's not going to worry about. He's going to, you know, he's got sets a very capable guy. Okay. You know, uh, Wharton MBA, uh, spent a lot of time at Disney, both on the game side. He's a life, lifelong gamer. Um, I'll tell you this for all the people that are like, you know, uh, uh, concerned, there's nothing to be concerned about. The guy came here a year ago. We, we did a, a search for the position. We always knew when we were searching for the position that at some point in time, if the person we selected was would work out in other words he was a good fit with the executive team he had our same value set in terms of who we want to be and uh all of those things that he would move into the ceo role and that mr stern would move into the chairmanship and so i think that that's all that's happened seth clearly has been a great fit in terms of the exec team and the organization and that's why you know that's why we've done it pretty much as planned, really. Um, And so over the course of the year, what's been happening is that Gary has been spending a lot of time with Seth, actually all of us have, to sort of educate him about our, you know, our company and our business. So he has learned the pinball business in this past year from all of our different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And so he under, he's got a pretty clear vision of everything that all of us do to make this thing work and happen. And, uh, and so, you know, him and Gary have been, you know, yeah. uh, connected together for the past year. If, if Gary gets an email, Seth gets the same email. If Gary's oh, in the okay. meeting, Seth is in the same meeting. If, if there's a phone conversation, they're both on it. So, you know, he, it's not any kind of, um, uh, I mean, there's honestly guys, it's, there's no drama. This is all good. This is all like essentially uh, 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 you know, an amazing part of, of our growing business, uh, and, um, and the, and sort of trying to, you know, the, the, you guys don't know this about Gary, but Gary cares a lot about h- how sustainable this business is. He wants this business to outlive him. He wants the business to outlive, uh, all of us really. He wants, the business to be a staple of, of, you know, uh, uh, of life. And so, um, part of, uh, creating a succession plan is, is trying saying, Hey, I need, I need some younger guys with new energy, new vision, new, uh, uh, you know, skill to, to take the company to the next level. And that's what this is about. Michael O'Donnell, the CFO, chief financial officer, has been with the company almost from its beginnings uh, in the Data East days. Uh, has been amazing at managing the the financial ups and downs of the business as it grew. And and Michael himself has said, "Okay, I'm I'm ready to to chill out." He's 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 retiring, but he's not um, disappearing. He's going to be a, he's going to remain a consultant to the company. To onboard the new CFO, the new CFO is 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 someone that we just hired. He starts in January, and he's going to start going through that same process of learning the business, so Michael can take a step back. Um, Shelly Sachs is probably the oldest employee of the company. Um, has has performed a variety of different roles over the years, and very close to all to a lot of us. And and Shelly is said, Hey guys, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to retire. And so Shelly's retiring. So, so I mean, really that's the press release you saw today. Yeah. I saw some, I saw some speculation, some crazy guys talking about me being president. I was like, fellas, <laughs> you don't want me being president. Yeah. You want me, you want me exactly where I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm the chief creative officer. I don't want to be anything else. I, I, I love my job. I love what I do. 
Um, uh, you know, I, I love the studio I've built and, and, and I have, you know, as you know, uh, uh, an incredibly talented staff. My joy is in guiding those guys to, to make amazing stuff, to, to be great in, 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 you know, in their own right. And, uh, and every once in a while, somebody lets me design a game. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, so, and then, and you, you know, you got Deadpool and, and you, and you got, you got Bond. It, it's a really hard thing to do. Don't get too used to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but the reality is that, uh, so I hope that clears oh, up some yeah. of it. You know? No, that's great. It's always, yeah. it's always great. I mean, that's why everybody loves hearing you on podcasts. Cause it's just great to hear directly from the source, you know, let's clarify these things. Yeah. And, yeah. But speaking of your staff, just real quick, um, mm-hmm. who is your least favorite employee and why is it Raymond Davidson? That's, <laughs> that's just, if you just want to answer guys, that outright, that would be great. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. uh, come no. on. How do you guys love to pick on Ray? Yeah, you know, no, uh, right yeah. now at four o'clock, um, <laughs> you know, right now at four o'clock, the, the software team meeting started. Oh, perfect. And so those guys, um, um, uh, Mark Wena and Mark Guidarelli run that meeting, and uh, those guys are all uh, right now as we speak. They are in a Zoom talking nice. about uh, all things software. Yeah. Um, so Ray Day, he he streams for TPN as well, and he's incredibly active on our Discord. And <laughs> and I also know that he listens. He consumes all pinball media immediately. I like, know. Yeah. If you post something, it's it's like how are you listening to this episode so fast? Yeah. And so yeah, um, I just like giving a hard. So time. we had. We had a vendor today uh, that uh, bought pizza for the company. <laughs> so, nice. So we had like this place, like this week is like, you want to gain 20 pounds? Come to Sir Pinball. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> the week before the holidays, right? Yeah. They, this guy, you know, they bought pizza, uh, Northern Precision Plastics. They, 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 they make a lot of our vacuum form product, you know, our, our ramps and stuff like that. And they bought pizza for the company and, um, that's a lot of pizza and, and that's a lot of pizza, yeah. the entire manufacturing facility, everybody, you know, like in a line, you know, salad, pizza, you know, all awesome. this. and then, and like, you can't walk the building without stumbling <laughs> into like cookies and popcorn and cake and God knows what the guys in, uh, Chuck Ernst crew, uh, they, Chuck made some sort of concoction, of uh of uh, eggnog that like <laughs> based on some recipe okay. that that from some chef or something i mean they were telling me this crazy story that where you make this stuff and, and it has to sit for six to eight weeks uh, oh, before man. you can drink it <laughs> so so chuck says is it gonna go a mold but I, I guess the alcohol in there prevents that from <laughs> happening so i said yeah. I said, Chuck, I love eggnog, but two, uh, two yeah. of these and I couldn't drive home. So yeah. it's like, we got to be, you know, <laughs> so, be, yeah. so that's why I'm, so that's why you're getting a bigger building is what it sounds like to prepare for all these snacks and goodies that keep oh, coming my your way. God. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, this is a bad week to try to lose weight at Stern Pinball. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that kind of This morning, I, I was walking the bond line this morning and, and, uh, Javier who runs the factory called me over and he had this huge uh <laughs> container of chicken tamales there you go and so so i had chicken tamales for breakfast mm-hmm. uh you know pizza for lunch and more chicken tamales I mean, oh you're good yeah oh yeah <laughs> you're doing yeah. good well that kind of leads me to my first question just a very open-ended one but like what what in the life of George Gomez at Stern, what would you call is like one of your best days? Like what, what would that look like? Like a best day? And then I'll let you know right now, the follow-up is going to be like, what would a bad day for George Gomez yeah. at Stern look like? Well, so, I mean, a great day is, I like, I love it when, when guys call me in the office, they call me into their office and say, you want to see something cool? Oh, and, cool. Yeah. You know, I, and I had that, I had that today with, uh, Brian and Dwight, uh, with their next game. And I shot, I shot their white wood and we talked about the game and stuff. And it's, it, it's, they've got some really cool stuff. And so it's like that, I mean, to me that that's fun, right? Yeah. That's like, I walk around the building. I, I, I talk to all these different design teams. Everybody's doing something different. We're having, you know, you're playing the games, you're talking about them. You're, you know, you're dealing, you're dealing with, you know, problems and issues and how do I make this right and how do et cetera. But, 
that's a fun day. Yeah. That's a really fun day. A bad day. What's a bad day? A bad day is a problem. You discover a problem. <laughs> you know, we've made a bunch of bad stuff and we got to figure out how to fix it. Or we've got something that's that like, you know, um, you know, s- some number of these things got out the door. And I mean, it's just that that's a bad day. Right. Yeah. But um, you don't have, you know, I mean, th- look, we sometimes it's it, the problems are all over the map. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you say, hey, this uh, something's failing, you know, you know, uh, or or we can't get these parts and we got to figure something out because the line's got to keep running. So what do we you know, sometimes we have to invent a solution to you can't get this part. OK, but we can get this part. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's that that's a bad day. But. Yeah, it sounds like it's just constant problem solving, not only like actual problems, but also you're creating something. So how do I make this? It, like, it is. It's, it's a lot. I mean, the, the you know what the problems, the the coolest thing about developing pinball machines is that the problems, uh, they they are so diverse mm-hmm. that the things that, that, that you, you know, like one minute you're talking about a game rule that that doesn't quite fit right, fit, feel right. And mm-hmm. next minute you're talking about a physical problem. And another another minute you're talking about how do we manufacture this in the best way? How do we make something cost what it needs to? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, hey, you know, the, I, I'm, so, you know, or you might be discussing a piece of art or you might be discussing a piece of music or you might be discussing, you know, a, a sound effect or, or something like that. Or uh, sometimes there are problems come in from the outside, like, you know, a distributor or, or an operator that has, you know, poses some sort of a challenge about something. And, it, yeah. and where we have, I mean, nowadays we have Insider Connected. It's another whole uh, arena of stuff that that's different and that we have to deal with. And um, so, yeah, I mean, not a shortage of things to no. do. I'll tell you that right now. No. And what's, what's interesting is I actually, so I interviewed you and Tanya last, it was like June or July. And yeah. so it was, it was actually July of this year that I was like, you know what? I kind of, I kind of want to reach out to George again and just check in and like, yeah. see, it's been a year. You kind of, you actually hinted at Insider Connected when we interviewed. And so at this point, Insider Connected was out. I was like, this will be fun. It'll be cool to check in on him. And I remember I reached out to you and you, your response was like, I'd love to do an interview, but maybe we should wait until the fall when, when the game's out. Yeah. And I remember reading that. I was like, the game, what are we, like, what are we, what are we talking about? Is George on a game? Like, what's this? And then the game yeah. came out and I told myself, I didn't want to have a conversation until I had actually played your game. And mm-hmm. so that delayed it. And here we are. I finally have it here in house, but here we are in December. And so what I'm realizing one is you're a busy man. Like I don't know if there's a good time ever throughout yeah. a year for you to catch your breath. It, um, it, it's it's hard. I mean, I'm going into a I'm going into a little bit of a catch my breath period, but mm-hmm. I um um you know I'm taking um I'm headed to New York to spend time with my girlfriend on um on Thursday, and I'll be there through the through the holidays. Nice. And so you know I'm not I'm not working during that time i I have god knows i have been you know i've been out there with her with her numerous times and i've and i've had to work so um yeah i mean you know it's it's exciting i mean it it, look it look it's i i i um i have non-stop days but it's it's all good it's all i mean it's 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 all good i'm gonna miss it someday i think oh Um, yeah yeah you know but i think uh it there there's um there's a lot, there's always a lot going on. We're, you know, we're preparing, there's another whole sphere of things that are happening in the background with preparing for the big move to our new building. And, and, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's you know? nonstop. <laughs> yeah. And so now that I actually have bond and I've had a chance to play it, um, yeah, I'd love to talk a little more about that. Well, I I know you you did two fantastic interviews with um, the Super Awesome Pinball Show, so I've mm-hmm. I've listened to those, and then I yep. also know you did a stream with Marco Marco Pinball, and I watched all of that. So I highly recommend anybody that's listening or watching this now; those yeah. are all worth your time. And I don't want to reiterate any of their questions. So right, right. Um, I but there was a few things that that like one question that I really like is I so obviously this was a Steve Ritchie game; he had it. There was yep. a point in time where you were, he's gone, you had his Whitewood and you were trying yep. to work on his game. That's right. And you decided, I can't do it. I can't do it. So you scrapped right. it. So yep. what my question is, and I also know there was a guy that that kind of egged you on with a two flipper and you're like, no, I got to do a three flipper game. So here you are, you're yeah. sitting in front of Kevin, your Whitewood. 
Kevin Grillo operate yep. on, um, you know, he, I don't know if you guys know him, but he, he he's, he's a good guy. Yeah. And uh, I think he came, he came to operating out of, out of being an enthusiast. And, uh, and so, um, but yeah. he, uh, you know, he said to me one day, he said to me, and, and I, I, he said to me, he goes, I can't wait for the next, yeah. he, he loves Deadpool. So he says to me, he goes, can't wait for the next George Gomez two flipper yep. masterpiece. And I was like, oh, buddy. Yeah, I can't do that. So that's yeah. what I'm that's what I'm thinking is you you I know you're a you're a tangible guy. So I'm assuming you're sitting down in front of your sketchbook. So it's like it's a blank slate. I mean, is yeah. the first decision or the first like what was the first thing besides flippers and slings did yeah. you put on that? And is was it just like, do I want the third flipper on the right side or the left side? Like where do you yeah. what was the first thing you thought of? So so I knew I I knew that so I I Believe it or not, I really do try to. I mean, some guys think all my games are the same, but but mm-hmm. I really do try to reinvent myself every time. And so I knew that I hadn't done a three flipper game since my very first uh, effort Corvette. Corvette yeah. So I said, I said, okay, I'm going to do a three flipper game. I knew that right from the get go. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and the question was, you know, wh- you're right. Where what do I do with the flipper? So now the 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 setup that I did on Bond is is very similar to Corvette. Um, the Corvette was actually easier to shoot. Uh, that that those that combination was actually easier to shoot because the shot the shot entrance. It was my first game, and the shot entrances were enormous. And so uh, I'm I've got a lot more experience now. I've got you know I I think twenty pinball designs under my belt, and so I what what I what I can do now that I couldn't do then is I can be more precise mm-hmm. with uh, with my architecture, and I have a lot more confidence about what I can get away with. And so I, the other thing I wanted was I wanted some stuff that I wanted a, a fair distinction between something that a novice can do and something that a that a pro can do. So okay. I really wanted. I wanted some things to remain hard and I wanted some things to be gi- gimmies for the average guy, for everybody that walks up to the game. Those upper, sh- those upper flipper shots and the speed yeah. of some of those feeds, it's definitely an advanced player skill. Yeah. But uh, as a novice or an average player, when you do hit them, you do feel like a million bucks. And so, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I don't, I think, I talked a lot about what I did, you know, the thinking behind Bond and stuff. And by the way, we're we're hardly done with Bond. Our our, our challenge has been we have so much video content and yeah. and uh, getting approvals is a little bit more complicated than than what we normally end up doing. And so every one of my releases has to be approved. So yeah. I can't it, uh and so I'm in. I'm in that, and um, with with fingers crossed, you guys are going to see one here in in the next couple of days, uh, right before Christmas. We're trying to give you another drop on Bond. Awesome. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're working on that. Um, my your my lights are out. Yeah, this yeah. kept happening in the Marco stream, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I your lighting's I fine. It's, okay, great. If, All so right, so we'll yeah, leave, you look great. <laughs> we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So I know, I think you said it was like the ramp or the two ramp was kind of one of the first elements you kind of laid. That was one of the, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that was, um, that was kind of a tongue in cheek. Uh, you know, uh, Gary always tells me that, um, when we do an upper flip, when we do a third flipper and up an upper flipper that, uh, it's unaccessible, it's inaccessible to a novice. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you know, you guys dedicate some element of the architecture to something that most people can never get. Mm-hmm. So I decided that if if I was going to do that, that thing was also going to be accessible to the novice. So Wonderful. that's why that's where that combination ramp that concept comes from. And sure. and honestly, in the in the, in the very first few um, uh, gate reviews on the game, you guys have heard me talk about gate reviews mm-hmm. in the past. I think. And so the few, first few gate reviews in the ramp in, in the game, I call that the Gary ramp <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. you know, um, and he was, he was kind of thrilled that I, okay, that you did what I wanted, which is you, you know, you, you have a portion of it that is accessible to a expert player, but that 
doesn't preclude that a novice can actually hit that shot. So sure, and I I know that's something. The the more that I've gotten into pinball and just watching like my friends and family come and play the games, it's very clear when they step up to a game. They want to. Uh, they want to be wild. They want to see something, right? So it's normally it's a mech. They see something yeah. on the game. So I'm assuming if somebody walked up to your Bond Premium, they're going to see James the Bond rocket. back there in the corner, or the rocket, and they're going to yeah, be like, the, James, "How do I James do Bond, this?" Yeah. yeah, James Bond in the corner is great. Um, it's great curb appeal, but yeah. but it's much harder to do. Everybody can get the rocket. Yes, and and actually, there's a multi ball that's not not terribly hard to get that's mm-hmm. tied to the rocket. So. I think that, um, yeah, and we're not, you know, like the flying, the the jetpack bond, which is what you're referring to, uh, we've got some really cool modes where you're actually going to control the jetpack as opposed to the game controlling jetpack. And so, we're you know, we're still working on that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's... uh, It's coming. Yeah, the the idea is the game's got to, it has to appeal to a broad demographic of people and in every way right you, mm-hmm. you know from across the room it has to do that when you're standing in front of it, it has to do that and and after you've played it 10 times it's it's got it's still got to uh do that and if we, when we get it right we get it right you know yeah. i mean like you know i think i think that deadpool has a lot of replayability i uh, agree <laughs> and, and so i think i think that i i can tell you that right now what's in my head that the that the balance of my work on james bond at this point is how do we make this as fun as ever, all the other like ultra fun you know games that I've managed to to make you know I've been fortunate enough to to create uh, over the course of of, of of the time. So that's well, really I mean that's the focus, right? It's like we all yeah. play you know we all we we all play it together. We all talk about it and we all and we all discuss it. We all go like okay, you know this is hard, this is easy, that was fun. Let's do more of that. Um, and, and how do we get more humor into it? How do we get more fun, like, you know, stuff that'll make you smile, stuff that'll make you, that makes you feel connected to the game. Right. Well, I will say one thing that you did very well is, and I, and I know there were some issues with, with rush and it's scoop in the middle and that caused the whole thing, but the scoop, the scoop for the DB, um, the DB eight or DB five, that scoop is awesome. The way, yeah. I mean, where it is, I was kind of scared that that would be a hard shot. It is a hard shot. It, it, it is. It consumes it, like, but it's not, I'm not getting any rejects from it. It seems like it's very safe. It, it swallows that ball right up when you want it yeah. to. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, what, you know what was a big problem that nobody's, nobody's, uh, it, it's like I fixed it and, and so <laughs> nobody knows it was a big problem, but okay. the other scoop, the other yeah, scoop was okay. a huge problem because uh, if you, if you notice, there's a foam pad mm-hmm. on the side rail. Do not remove that foam pad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do not remove that foam pad, or you will live in that scoop. <laughs> oh, so you're saying the foam pad keeps the ball from just always being in the scoop? Yes, because gotcha. the because the back and forth on the game, and mm-hmm. uh, I had I had several different designs for that area. Uh, one of them was similar to something I did on Lord of the Rings where the floor of the, of the, the water was stepped down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and for sure the ball was in there all the time and, and it was, it was just, it was too much. And Mm -hmm. so, so I raised it up to the play field level to try to try to get rid of that. And that helped, but it didn't fix the problem. So the foam pad fixed the problem. And so, uh, yeah, it's and you can still you can still shoot in there. Oh yeah. Uh, at one point, I had a target by the flipper. Okay. Turned out the target wasn't doing anything, so I took it out. Yeah. You know? If you hit the target, you're probably gonna hit the scoop. I yeah. I think it's it's interesting because like on the promo video and the promo photos, there was no foam pad, and then right there you was add a, a foam pad, and people yeah. are like, "What the heck? What are they doing?" And you're yeah. actually helping. Yeah. Yeah. So so the, the look, I always. Um, the the way the game feels is king mm-hmm. and and everything else is after that so yes there was a beautiful illustration of the disco volante the the uh, largo's yacht from mm-hmm. from thunderball uh and in on that sticker i think you still get that sticker i i think that sticker's in, in your, the goodie bag in the yeah. goodie bag i think so but uh, but whatever you do do not remove the foam pad okay, and put, yeah. put the de- put the disco volante there cuz you will hate yourself yeah well that's good to know <laughs> so, that's really good to yeah. know 
And I think um, another question here, I, I mean, I know that was another thing that people noticed early on was that the premium, the two pops were tied together. And some people yes. read into that and they're like, oh, Stern's cheaping out, blah, blah, blah. It's and not, it, I, it's like, I, it, I, it, go ahead. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think I answered this question you on did. the other podcast, but the reality is that one of the things that a designer does is, honestly, you have to balance the amount of what your budget is relative to the things you're trying to do. Yeah. And, and, and the way we are, the, the, the really cool thing about uh, the spike system is that one of the really cool things about it is that it's modular yep. and scalable. So every node board supports some of uh, some level of resources in the game features, you know, switches, drivers, targets, uh, you know, uh, motors, all this stuff, right. Driven by coils, driven by the node boards. Right. So, so when you when you had most stern games are built with two node boards. Yep. Sometimes we use we the the beauty of the architecture is that the communications protocol that is used to 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 connect together all of the nodes in the within the game is such that when when we need a special node we create a special node and then that node okay. goes into the inventory. So for example. The node that drives the QR reader is a custom node that it, it says, basically, I drive QR readers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll see nodes that, like, for example, there's a node on the television set in Batman, right? Okay. So, so what that means is that, that you have, you're not re-architecting a system. You're designing a, a custom-specific piece that now becomes a part of your inventory of things that you can take off the shelf and use when you're designing another game that needs something like that. Uh, and it all fits inside the environment of the network protocol. Mm -hmm. So that, so that you know, the Spike 2 powers up. It says, all right, everybody, who's in the world? Tell me who you are. I'm yeah. Node 8. I'm Node 9. I'm Node 7. I'm, I'm, I'm this node. I'm that node. I'm the cabinet node. And so they all report in and the system says, okay, I, I understand who you are. Now let's talk. And, you know, and that's essentially how a game, you know, how, a, how a game happens. So to go back to your question, when, when you run out of drivers and you have to spend the money for an, an additional node, you have to make a choice. What's it worth to you? Yeah. And, and, and having two pop bumpers separated, it's kind of like you say to yourself, do you want me to kill one of the other features to give you two independent pop bumpers? If you can prove when, in fact, I made yeah. two pop bumpers tied together, two pop bumpers and a rubber band, I made them work as well as any three pop bumper array that I've ever designed in my life. And and I, you know, I challenge anybody to tell me that those pop bumpers work any worse than any other pop bumper array I've ever done. Yeah. So I'm like. I don't, you know, you really want me to add, you know, it's like, you want me to kill like a, a flying guy or you want me to, you know, you, you know, what do you want me to take out? You want me to take out the DB5 so that you can have a independently connected pop bumper? Not going to happen. So, so your node board. So that's what I wanted to, to yeah. ask. I, I think they said, or it was said on the Marco stream that, um, that means you have 18, was it 18 drivers? Is that between the two? Yeah, so, I don't remember what the number of I, I don't remember the exact number, but that's how that's how we do it. So we basically you say I got this many switches, I got this many light drivers, I got this many uh, uh, coil drivers. Okay. I need you know I need a motor driver board. I need to you know whatever it is that you need, you start with the set. And when you we need to go over, you have to you have to basically yeah. say okay, I'm I'm willing to spend that cost. I'm willing to say now let's say for example that you were light on like the like the cost of your toys let's okay. say that your your a, a mech isn't let's say you don't have a godzilla building or a batman turntable and and now you know you say okay look i got extra money i can add another node you know mm -hmm. a node has a value i don't know what the you know i forget what the cost of a node is but it's but it's enough that you say Okay, I'm not going to add another hundred bucks to the game just to drive another pop bumper, and ha sure. then I have all these, and I have all these spare resources that I, I don't have any use for, right? Because you're buying, you're buying into the notion of a whole node, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to create like a, a two coil drive node board for, yeah, yeah you for know, one game, one time. 
I for one pop bumper, you know, I mean, it's like, I, I don't mind. It's not even about one time because it'll go in the inventory. Yeah, and that's okay. how we work around here. We're just like, what do you got on the shelf? What can you use to do what you're to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? So um, the, the brainstorming that I was trying to, to, so when you were talking about, you know, slots or how many, like yeah. a node board, if you have 18 things. So yeah. I, I'm assuming that's coils and that's motors. Is that right? Yeah. So, well, well a node, a nodes drive, nodes drive. Uh, you know, lamps, they read switches and coils, uh, motor drivers. We typically, if, if depends on the kind of motor, sometimes we can use, you know, sometimes we can use a coil drive. Sometimes we can use a different, a light drive can sometimes control a motor. So, okay. so, so you, so it depends, it depends on what it is, you know, what the step or whatever, whatever it is, it has different, different characteristics, but you're still, uh, you're, you're still assigning resources. By the way, this is not anything new. Yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. You know, no. uh, like when I worked, I worked on Monster Bash and 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 whatever the you know, I forgot what the what the you know, the parameters WP, you know, WPC 95 were. We had to work and work to that. Right? right. So it's kind of like or you're creating something special. You're adding something to the system, et cetera. And and you have to justify the cost. It, we don't we don't shoot from the hip around here. No, meaning no, that, yeah. well, you know, it's like like the. The game has a cost target. The team tries to hit that cost target. There's some flexibility as you get as you get close, and 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 the flexibility has to do with the the the, the balance of the business equation. Are are you know do the sales does the sales team think they can pass the the, the cost on to the customer? Does the sales team believe that that they don't have that ability that that that, that there is that limitation, and so. There's lots of different things that play that, that play into this, right? The cost of a game is is not just what the designer puts into it, but the cost of those materials and yeah. processes, and and all of the things that that it costs to make these things. And those costs, by the way, in the world today are all upside down because yeah. of COVID, right? And we're still suffering from it. Uh, the supply chain's all screwed up, and and all of the things that we buy cost more. Very seldom is somebody showing up and going, "Hey, the price of plywood just dropped." <laughs> yeah, look at you, yeah, it's yeah. on sale. So, yeah, right. Well, so, does does the bill of material does that fluctuate based on license? Like, does a more expensive license mean you yeah. can't put as much in your game? Well, it may not mean that you put more in your may or it may not restrict the, the what you put in the game, but it, okay. it will definitely affect the price. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you know, it, it be, it, so it's kind of like you say, okay, look, when we go into a licensing situation, if the cost of the license is X, that is part of the cost of the game. Sure. So there's there's no, you know, there's no two ways about it, and and that deal affects you know that look a very uh, a a very expensive license. Is a license that, in in some ways, you still have to do the math and say, when do we amortize this? When when do we, you know? How do we get the the licensor needs to make money? We need to make money, and 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 we have to create a product that that's within the scope of what a customer will afford. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there are exceptions, right? When you do very limited, um, you know, very niche products, you can you can you can you know. Uh, uh, basically, do do something different. You're about to see that when we announce the 60th anniversary bond, sure, right? Which I, I I know everybody's on my case because I've said several times that it's around <laughs> around the corner. And I won't like, ask you. I won't ask. Well, you no, it's, it's like yeah. it, it, but you know the, the the release decisions are sales and marketing decisions. They're not you know sure. they're, they're they're not mine. So so I think those guys they know what they're doing and they will make some you know them they will say oh hey you know. Uh, maybe we're going to release it at this time and we're going to release it at that time. So we'll just, yeah. Well, yeah. I just, I, I, so many people, I don't know, so many, so many of us on Pinside or Facebook or whatever, everybody yeah. assumes they know something about the bomb, the bill of materials. And well, that clearly had more, that clearly had less. I mean, can you explain, like, I know when I interviewed uh, Keith and we were talking about Godzilla, I said something mm -hmm. about an opto spinner. He's like, don't get me wrong. I love opto spinners, mm -hmm. but it cost me, I could put three normal spinners in 
yeah. for the price of one opto does that yeah. does an opto spinner use more resources like on a node board or is it just a cost thing opto versus regular or no it's just a, it it's very simple it's like it is the cost of that those that device okay so in some cases in the case of in the case of this pop bumper a pop bumper is a pop bumper is a pop bumper the sure. only variation you've seen in the cost of pop bumpers is essentially uh, what what you know prices that the markets you know uh, forces on us like the price of steel or the okay. or the vendor the vendor that you know that molds the plastic part may, may you know maybe oil's gone up and he pays more for plastic so he charges me more for the pop bumper cap whatever it is so that's the only variation but in my case it meant I'm adding another node board to drive yeah. that pop bumper yeah. in in Keith what Keith is talking about is an opto spinner while it works. It you know uh, amazingly I've got one on bond right yep. and then the only problem I have with it right now is that sometimes the, the the bracket's not formed right and 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 I've seen some of them come off and I'm working on 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 getting you a fix for that but but the reality is that it's the cost of that part so okay. it's like I look that that uh, spinner has some pretty trick sensors on it uh, and, and, you know, the electronics cost X it's, it's not as simple as, uh, a, a bracket, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, the weighted spinner and, and, a, and a micro switch. So you, you make trade-offs if, if you want zero friction, um, and the thing spins forever, then you're going to go the opto way or the, or the sensor way. And if, and if you, you know, but, but he's looking at what he's talking about is, He's responsible for his bill of materials, so he's yep. got to make choices. Just like I made a choice to tie the pop bumpers together, he's making choices, and he's saying, "You know, love this thing, but I'm not gonna. I I, I love it more that I have three spinners." Yeah, yeah, it's more important. You know? Yeah, right. In in my case, in Bond, I was like, I had I had one spinner, and originally I had two. I had one in that center lane. Okay. And and it turned out that I I, I started doing other things with that center lane. And I thought, I thought, you know what? I don't really need this second spinner, so I took it out. And sure. and so, um, so yeah. So it's the the designer is making choices about the content of his game. What about and, what about um? So like another thing that Key said is he said um, on the back of Godzilla originally he yeah. had just flat plastics for the buildings. Yeah. And somebody he said somebody higher up said that looks bad. Let's do molded plastics. Yeah. So that's the, there's no electronic limitation. I mean, I'm assuming there's probably decisions that are made too based on manufacturing. They're like that looks like that's well, going to be a pain to install. Well, plastic so let's part. Go. You know, there, there, there's a variety of things because a plastic, a molded plastic building is is uh, you know requires tooling. Yeah. So there's there's, there's an expense. Yeah. Yeah. There's an expense that has to be. So if you you know every game has a tooling budget. Okay. And by the way, the tooling budget is amortized across, you know, the, the bill of materials of the game. Also, it plays a role in the, in the, you know, but so let's say that the tooling budgets have a little bit more flexibility because let's say that Keith uses, uh, for the sake of conversation, let's, let's just say his tooling budget is a hundred thousand dollars and he only uses 50,000 of it. Okay. Well, well, when now, when Brian shows up and Brian's got, you know, Brian requires more than his hundred thousand or whatever. You know, whatever the number is, I can I do the math in the back of my head and I go, I still I got fifty thousand that I saved from Keith's tooling budget that I can repurpose for Brian's tooling budget. Okay, yeah. So that's why you see you'll see a game that that maybe doesn't require much and it and it, and it doesn't have a lot of tooled parts, and then you'll see another game that has a lot of tooled parts. And some of it is the designer's choice, right? Like, I mean, I, I have, I've made games that don't, I mean, Bond has a lot of tooled stuff, right? It's got yeah. a tooled rocket. It's got yeah. a tooled tra dragon tank. It's got a, it's got a tool DB5, right? We created mm -hmm. that DB5, yeah. you know, that, that's a crap load of tooling money to, you know, that DB5, it's, it's an injection molded part with a lot of decoration. In addition to that, all the chrome was molded separately, yeah. electroplated. And then glued to the DB5. And then, you know, I mean, it's like there's a lot of detail in that DB5. It, that DB5 had to be approved by Aston Martin, yeah, by the it, way. It looks, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like it could be a legit die cast model. Like, it's, yeah, it because, is incredible. Absolutely. So, so and, and, and Aston Martin, you know, I mean, had to sign off on it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I think, so the, 
so all of the things that essentially are the cost of a game, tooling, wire, wood, you know, steel, some of it is fabricated, meaning that it doesn't come off of a tool, whether it comes of a die or injection molding uh, 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 tool or w- whatever it is, a vacuum form tool. Yeah. All of those things, they cost different amounts. So a vacuum form ramp, the tooling for vacuum forming is substantially uh, cheaper than the tooling for injection molding. Okay. And, and so, yeah. you know, a roto mold is something in between. It, it's more than, than, than a vacuum form. It's, it's less than an injection mold. And so, so we make all of those decisions about the, the stuff. We looked at the Godzilla molding and we said, you know what? The flat plastics aren't going to cut it. You got to do something <laughs> better than, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. it was, right? And I thank you for it because just right out of frame, I have a Godzilla premium and what a game, yeah. man. It's, oh, yeah. It's so, an awesome game. You had said, um, so you took out a second spinner, but you said you also originally had a mech that was in your bond yeah. that is now in Keys. And I'm assuming that's the it, odd it was job actually, spinning hat. Is that it right? It is. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's actually in both, it, it was in both games. And it's, yep. it, you know, it, it, like, it, and it was one of those things where we, we both had it. It wasn't, he took it, you know, he didn't okay. take it from me. I mean, we both had it. And, um, and, and, and it, it was screwing up my shots. I'm seeing that. Honestly. That's cause you said it's right where the, we- it, the it's right the, where the weapons were. Yeah. yeah. And, so it's like, it was right there. And, and it was a yeah. compromise. It was a compromised position, meaning that depending on how it was oriented, when it landed, uh, it, it might, it, may, it might mean nothing, but, but okay. some percentage of the time it, it just didn't feel right to me. So I was like, you know what? I'm not, I don't need this. Yeah. The- and, the game fl- when when you're hitting shot it flows well and it's a very unique shooter there's no doubt about it i i it really surprised the heck out of me when i backhanded that shot between the two ramps like visually that does not seem like that would work and it does and it, it's a consistent yeah. reliable shot so i i got to give it to you there like it is a very unique shooter it doesn't feel like to me it doesn't feel like anything you've uh, you've done before any like you but, know but you know it's like uh, to the guys that think all my stuff's the same <laughs> I, like, you know, I, I'm going to give you some titles. I okay. want you to play these titles. Mm-hmm. And, and if you could find a place to play these titles back to back to back, that's how you that's how you're going to come to, you know, that's that's going to be your 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 eureka moment that, oh, yeah. my God, his yeah. stuff is not the same. Right. So, um, you know, shoot a John, you know, shoot a Corvette, shoot a Johnny Mnemonic, shoot yeah. an NBA fast break shoot a monster bash right and 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 on you know i mean shoot a lord of the rings yeah. right lord of the rings i i was stepping out of my of what I, even you know all these guys telling me i'm i'm always in a fan layout shoot a lord of the rings does it yeah. feel like a fan layout to you i mean if it does you're not understanding what that is you mm-hmm. know because because that that game has one of the coolest things about that game is no matter uh, almost Almost regardless of what you do, the ball lands in a good place. Yes. I'll give so, you that. Yep. Um, so it's a game that has it, it really it really supports a lot of the things that you know we did with the rules that that you know that that because of how that is you know because of the way that architecture flows. So I mean, it's like uh, I mean, look at it, go look at a Batman. You think that big round thing in the middle and the yeah. moving crane? You think all that stuff? You know, does that really feel the same to you? Um, uh, I don't. Don't even not, talk no, about Deadpool. Yeah, don't even talk yeah, about I Deadpool, know. right? I mean, it's yeah. like the cross shot. Some of the ones that everybody ignores. Um, my Avengers from you know uh, whatever it was, twenty twelve. Find what find a premium Avengers uh, yeah. and shoot that. I mean, I think I think the games. Uh, you know, I, I try to make them feel different um, so that you have something fresh. With Bond, I I thought I want to get all this stuff in. I just couldn't, you know. I I, I physically didn't have enough architecture. Um, not to mention, I would have run out of money uh, <laughs> yeah. to put all the yeah. stuff I wanted to put in there. But no, I I don't blame you. I'm not. You're, I'm in total agreement with. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys. No, that I was thinking, all your games. But, yeah. but I guarantee you, there's a guy listening oh, to you sure. right now that says, you know, uh, yeah, all his stuff's the same. So yeah. Well, speaking of things that are like not the same, and this, yeah. I just wrote this down because. Um, the Stranger Things projector, the Stranger oh, yeah. Things projector, that mm-hmm. is so unique to pinball. Mm-hmm. And so the only reason I bring it up is uh, this projection mapping situation. Mm-hmm. What I mean, what are your takeaways? That game's been out there a long time. Stranger Things Premium is highly sought great, after. 
Yeah. It's do a, you feel that projection mapping, is that something you guys might do again or what are, or what I mean, were your issues with that? Uh, I mean, yeah. The, so our issues were the, um, with, with a, a bunch of a bunch of different issues uh, uh it, it's it's a very strong game it's yeah. a very it's a it's i can tell you that it's 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 one of our best earning games yes it kills on location um, it kills on location i think uh, uh brian and lonnie uh and mike finicor those three guys did an amazing job with what they had to work with and um i think that the the difficulty in projection was like i don't you know, I think that it, it's a it's a difficult game to manufacture. OK. And and I think that, you know, I think I also think that if, you know, I, and, you know, you never know, you know, you talk about people, stranger things, uh, premiums are in demand. You you may see those again. That would be so, great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you may see those yeah. again. And and one of the things that I want to take another, I you know, if we ever revisit that, I, I think that we could do a better job with the TK lock. OK, um, yeah. you know, we we struggled to get consistent performance from TK lock. We, you know, um, we, you know, some people are very fussy about the the, you know, precise location of the projected image and all this kind of stuff. And so that's the kind of stuff that makes it hard. Sure. It's not that. And, and the, the like the the most difficult thing was uh, uh, we went through umpteen different projection solutions i saw a picture of stacks and stacks of projectors. oh my god yeah, yeah we we validated and 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 try to find cross uh, uh, you know uh, i mean i mean we the amount of work that went into that uh and you know to position it to mount it to, yeah. to make it consistent with the to, to get it to work in different light conditions and mm-hmm. i mean it was it was a ton of work um, and so, yes, it's very, it's, it's very impressive. Um, they, they haven't, uh, honestly, they haven't been unreliable. Okay, the, that's the, good. you know, the, uh, we've had more issues with the TK lock than we have had with yeah. the projector, <laughs> which who, who would have thunk it, right? I mean, you go, go, man, we do electromagnets. We could do electromagnets in our All sleep. Yeah. 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 So. Well, um, I, I think that projector, it's just the idea of taking a physical play field and, and, in having something change on it, you know, like that's what on dead, uh, I mean, on Godzilla, you know, the building going down and now the shots are going different ways. Transformation. Yeah. You're, you know, throwing a diverter, even just having an diverter and bond to fling the ball up in, into the rocket lock, you know, but that's something that visual change is so strong with the projector. It's the magic. I mean, that, it, that is, uh, the, are you going to see it again? You may see it again on stranger, you know, you may see more stranger things, I'm not sure if we'll, if we'll, I mean, it's like when we make decisions like that, sure. they have to, they're integrated into the theme. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. that game, you know, the UV lights, right. Uh, I mean, all that stuff is integrated in the theme. You know, it's like, everybody's asking me, how, why aren't there UV lights yeah. and everything? Well, yeah. they don't really that make sense to yeah. everything, yeah. you know? So it's kind of like, you know, they make sense to stranger things. It yeah. didn't make sense to, you know, Godzilla, right. Or whatever, well, you know, so if we're going to, so lighting, let's talk about yeah. light. I love it. I love lighting the expression light kit. I had a chance when I borrowed from Zach and Nicole, I borrowed a, a, yeah. a Led Zeppelin and they sent me an expression light kit for the yep. pro that completely changed the game. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing. All these Rush LE uh, owners are saying the same thing, completely yeah. changing the game. Yeah. Um, I know people are dying for that kit, but is there is there is that a limitation to just music pins, or is there a chance that we could see that type no, of lighting I, in a normal game? So I think I think what I'd like to do, to tell you the truth, what I'd like to do is I'd like to figure out a way where um, it 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 ships on games that it makes sense to. Like you know, you mentioned the music pins, and sure, the reason it's the reason it works in the music pins is because a really smart guy, Tim Sexton, did a bunch of work. Uh, on the software side, um, that that made some of that lighting appear pretty smart. Okay. And so, so it is that interaction with the music that is the magic. Because yes. otherwise, you just have a bunch of lights like you have on some of these aftermarket things. You know, yeah, the they don't choreography really, is insane. They're yeah. not. No, not at all. And they're not going to be because of that. So the <clears throat> so what I'd like to do is I'd like to I'd like to you know. Every cabinet has the ability to take it 
And if you want to, you know, we, you know, we've talked about it, you know, we probably should, we'll probably ship it on games that it, that it makes sense makes to sense ship it in everything else. You can buy it for and install it. And there'll be some, you know, there, there'll be some amount of code that's done so that it works in anything. The other thing it does is it, it's gonna, you know, it's like all, all these guys with the aftermarket lighting solutions, honestly, those things are pretty, uh, pretty, uh, you know, cumbersome, right? I mean, you want to yes. lift the play field and you got to take all this stuff off. And it's like, I don't want that. I want it to be seamless. I, and and so, that's, that's you know, why I, I have actually splurged and bought the official toppers because it's the, yeah, it's actually want, built into the game and chore, yeah. choreographed into the game. Yeah. We're working on a, you know, we're, we're, we're playing around with a new bottom cabinet design that will sort of move the game on and, and, um, and, and, you know, do some, do some of the thing, you know, like, I don't know what it was eight years ago or something. I did, I redid the back box and, mm -hmm. and that back box has been very successful. It's so nice. And, you know, and it, you know, when it's screwed together, right. It's, 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 uh, it's awesome. It does so many things and it does it well. And it's, it's really easy to control the fit and finish and stuff like that. Uh, uh, for the most part. And, and, and so we want to do a cabinet that has the same sort of thing. Our cabinet over years has a lot of band-aids in it because we've run in, we run into problems or a vendor gets in, you know, we get into a jam on something and we have to do something uh, last minute on. It. And so I want to, I want to take a step back and sure. clean all that stuff up. It's an opportunity to integrate some of these features in a, in a more elegant way. And, and, uh, so, you know, one of the bazillion R and D projects that are going yeah, on around yeah, here, you know, yeah. just squeeze it in. Yeah. No, yeah. I think it's lighting is huge for me. And that's, that's, that leads me to another question, which is, I, I, it seems like most other manufacturers at this point have kind of transitioned where every single insert or bulb on the game is an RGB led of some sort. Um, yeah. I know you guys have had like guardians of the galaxy premium. Every insert was an RGB led. Is there or what, what's your thought process on still having, you know, colored inserts or just single bulb inserts? I know you got, you've gone to on certain games, yeah, like I mean, three color GI. So, so it's a, so it's a, it's a cost challenge. Okay. And, and you have, and, and for us, it's, it's sort of like, you know, you trade, what am I trading to, to do that? And, and, and where does it, where does it mean something? Because when I come off of some of these games and, I'm like, my eyes, yeah, are, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm yeah. seeing, I'm seeing spots. I'm like, okay, you know, that looked great in your launch video, but good God, I don't want to play <laughs> that thing, you know? So, yeah, yeah. so I don't, you know, I don't, I mean, that's the problem, right? Okay. That the problem yeah. is that it's kind of like, just, it's like, it's like the blind, just it's too much shove shit in there. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry, yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of like, I want a more elegant solution. I want something. So it's like, yeah, we talk, you know, full RGB, blah, 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 blah. You know, it talks about all the time. The other thing is I want to do it in such a way that it, that's cost effective for us. And so okay. there's, there's, there's been a lot of discussion around here about how to do that in a more elegant way than what everybody else has done. Okay. Um, and, and so, but I don't, you know, I just, I don't, I, I want, I'm very focused on, uh, we need to be, you know, we need to pick our battles so that we can continue to be successful. I, I, I weigh all of these decisions oh, yeah. Yeah. and I say, okay, I'm going in this, I'm going to, okay. It's important to do this now. It's not important to do that now. And so I, I make choices. Right. And yeah, you, know, you guys talking about, you know, the, you know, what do I do? This is what I do. <laughs> this is, yeah, problem solving <laughs> and making hard decisions every day. Um, one thing I did look up is Spike Two. We've been we've been on a Spike Two board a long time. Is there uh, Spike Three? Is that in the yeah. works or a whole nother board? Are we anywhere yeah, close is. to that? It, yeah, it is. It yeah. is. <clears throat> yeah, Spike Three um, will bring a whole new host of um, I, you know. I, I mean. So the beauty of Spike Three is um, you're going to get a lot more power okay. without without incurring a lot more cost, and um, and the reality is that the node architecture will remain as is. Nice. So the so basically your you know your your um there you know there will be an element of backward compatibility, um and uh, and which gives us flexibility in terms of the transition to a new hardware set. 
Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it, the work on that is, uh, you know, I, you know, you're not going to see it yesterday or you know, very yeah, soon, yeah, yeah. but, but you'll see it. You, yes. It's being worked on more processing power and, you know, and all of the things, all of the things that are sort of like, okay, it's, you know, it's like, we know this and now we need to move the game on and this is how we're going to do it. Well, that's good. I, I know my fear, well, it wasn't a fear, but like when Insider Connected came out, it just seemed like such a revolutionary change that in my mind, I'm like, I'm surprised that's not a uh, Spike 3 exclusive. You know, I'm surprised that that's the yeah. fact that not only is it Spike 2, but also that you made all the, you retrofitted the kits, all yeah. the games so that every single one of your games, it's, that's awesome. And because of Spike 2. That's awesome. Meaning, meaning yeah. it's like, you know, <clears throat> so all of all of that could happen because of spike two because yeah. when we when we when we did spike two we said okay we don't know what we what we don't know about the future but we need to flexibility is like really important oh, yeah. keep it modular and, yeah. and 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 by the way that flexibility has also saved our ass in <laughs> in terms of uh, mass producing the volumes of games that we're producing in an environment where you can't get parts for this yeah. or that or the other thing. And so the, those decisions, the more modularity and flexibility that you can design into a system, the more survivable you will be. And that that's, and th those are not sexy decisions. So no <laughs> one wants to focus on them. No yeah. one wants to think about them. Um, some, you know, uh, you know, my genius hardware design, um, guardian angel, Andrew Pines, uh, is, is a, a freaking visionary. And, and we, when we sat down to talk about what should the system be, those were big, big points, you know? Yeah. And it's paying off years and years later. Yeah, that was it 2017. Is. 2017 is when uh what was it batman was first one with it right yeah yeah but, but spike but actually so the Sp spike one was around for a short period of time i think spike two yeah i guess we launched it with with batman we actually launched it with we Aerosmith? launched it with batman then we went we did but arrow arrow beat batman into production so oh, you okay. saw it on batman but arrow beat batman into production so yeah, I mean it's it, and it's going to have a good, you know, it's going to have a, a a pretty healthy life and and oh, yeah. especially with what nobody knows is the volume, the huge volume <laughs> of games that we've made. Yeah. You know, there's a that, lot of them out yeah, there. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, speaking of your volume, I mean, I know this year you had to go down instead of three cornerstones, you went down to two and it's looking yeah. like next year's also going to be two. So, yep. That's fantastic that it gives from a manu manufacturing standpoint, it gives you a chance to not only catch up on some of this ridiculous yeah. backlog you have, yep. but having this extra time, I mean, you have, you have Brian Eddy, you got Jack Danger now, Keith Elwin, yep. Yep. John Borg, yep. and then in yourself, if you want to be included in that, but it's, I mean, it, it sounds like from a designer standpoint, are, does that mean now that every designer has more time to invest in each one of their games? Because... Um, yeah, the some do. Schedule? Yeah, some do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some definitely do. I didn't, but yeah, some do. Yeah. You, you never do, uh, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Some do. So they have. Um, but, but you also. I mean, you know, we're also booked out to you know two <laughs> years in terms yeah. of licenses and stuff. And so there's guys that when when they finish and it you know and the game you know the the game it you know hopefully they'll finish the game's done and it goes on the shelf and they move on to their next game mm -hmm. uh, but those guys are all busy i've i mean every one of those designers that that you just mentioned i've flipped their games um you know i've been flipping their games for a little while so they, they all have stuff going on and nice. uh and you're gonna see some you know some really cool new things and um yeah it's very exciting Oh, for sure. No, I, I know the production schedule has kind of already been out there and just seeing what's coming yeah. ahead. It's like, okay, well, March, we're going to have to see what's coming up, you know? Yeah, and that's right. I, you know, if people are going to guess, we're assuming it's probably going to be Jack Danger or Brian Eddy. That's who's next in line, right? So yep. we're just, yep. let's see. Yep. Let's see what's coming up. Yep. Um, and I'm excited about it. Um, One one name I haven't seen in a while is Tanya. What's what's Tanya up to these days? I know when we talked, he was oh, he was the insider connected guy, and connect, he said yeah. he was going to have a game. Yeah, so, he's collab he's collaborating with with uh, Mr. Danger. 
Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So he's yeah. back in, I, I mean, I know he, yeah, he's he did... in the seat. He's in the seat. That's he came awesome. off. Yeah. He came off of, uh, the, some of the genius work that he did on, on <laughs> IC and, and yeah. And then, and then, and you know, and, and then he, uh, yeah, he's on, he's on Mr. Dangerous product. So oh, that's exciting. So that, yeah. that's a, you know, that, that team, uh, yeah, those guys are working together and then, you know, we'll see what, you know, we'll see what's in store for him after that. Yep. That's cool. I, I have just, there's a lot of people that, you know, for Deadpool to be his, essentially his only game. I mean, he's, he crushed it with that, with that code. And so that's why I know there's a lot of people, myself included, that are anxiously awaiting to see what's next. Yeah, we were laughing because yesterday, Mr. Yeti, uh, Zombie Yeti sends me the snapshot from Pinside, you know, and, you know, I never go to Pinside, so I don't know what the hell's <laughs> going on, but yep. he sends me a snapshot from Pinside that, 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 that Deadpool's number four or whatever. Yep. And we were laughing. And so, so Tanya was in my office this morning. I said, dude, nice job. And he said, he turns around to me and he goes, dude, nice job. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You just pat, pat each other on the back. You guys really crushed it. You guys absolutely yeah. really crushed it in that game. Yeah, we uh, had fun. We had yeah. fun. We had a lot of fun. Well, what else do I have? I have, um, well, here we go. Here's a good transition for you. <laughs> Speaking of okay. doing things together, yeah, co-op mode. Co-op mode to me is yeah. huge. Like yeah. I, I have a TNA. That was the first game that I played, uh-huh. Total Nuclear Annihilation, that had co-op mode. Yeah. And it's in my mind, it's a game changer as a teaching tool to be able to play a game with somebody mm-hmm. and like, let's do this together. And then Dwight, shortly yeah. thereafter through it in turtles and now it's been in every dwight game yeah. is there is is this kind of is this are they in dwight games because dwight cares about it or is there a chance that co-op mode may we, become no a we, standard? we all care we all care about it uh we all think it's cool um there's lots of things that you're going to see i think uh related and and some of those things are actually going to spill over into ic Cool. Um, okay. So yeah. So you. So yeah. It's not. It. It's. It's strictly a matter of, uh, uh, you know, to some extent, it, it is designer's choice. Okay. But everybody talks about it, and you know, and everybody's like, oh yeah, and if I had time, I'd put this in. Um. And so, uh, yeah. I mean, there's some there's some really cool stuff coming that I unfortunately can't really get into, but that that will the a lot more. Of a lot more stuff, kind of like that, is the best I can tell you. I am fine with that. Um, no, and yeah. and a lot of it is, you know, and some of it is, it's really tight. A lot of it is the power of I C, the ability to do some of those, th- you know, some things that 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 uh, uh, make the game interact in, sure. in new ways. And so, yeah, co op mode is well loved. There's no, yes, uh, it's not going anywhere. I yeah. love it like I said, as a teaching tool, it's a fantastic teaching tool. And that was another thing I thought up is like, like difficulty settings. Uh, if that was something, I mean, I mean these are all, yeah, ideas. I know you've to, already had, but that's, well, we have talked a little bit about difficulty settings. Um, it's, it, it, it always comes down to, I, I, I think that we, you know, we get into the, we get into the, the, the cycle of making the game and the, the, the pressure and and focus on on the core game yeah uh somehow you know these things fall to the side it's like not that we don't want to do them or know how to do them it's simply a matter of you got to make choices and when you're up to i mean when a game team the the part that no one understands is the amount of pressure um and 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 work that a, a game team undergoes to to generate these games and and so and 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 pressure is like i mean it comes from a hundred sides right depending on where you are in the project mm-hmm. and there's a you know there there are licensing challenges there are cost challenges there are performance challenges there are manufacturing challenges that i mean it's just a million things there are schedule challenges and life challenges that introduce you know that because you you have human beings working on the product so you know shit happens in people's lives and it affects the products and and, i mean it's like or affects the cycle the development cycle and stuff like that but i mean we i've said it before we we run the studio with a certain amount of discipline uh these guys have bought into it if you're here yeah, you know, if 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 you're here and operating uh, in this environment, it's because 
you bought in to, to the vision. And, and, and you know what? I've proven that the vision could work. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like some amount of discipline is required to do this work. And, and if you don't want to do that, you just want to, you know, uh, take six years to make a game. This isn't the place for you. <laughs> yeah. And that's something I, I, you know, congrats on that. It's when it comes to Stern, it's, I have full confidence. You're going to get a game. You're going to get a finished game, you know, and, and that's something, I mean, that's a lot of conversation with bond. Maybe the bond isn't finished now, but everybody, it will like, be. everybody, exactly. It will be, the code yeah. will be good. No, you, 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 you you're not going to drop my, anything. You have my there. word. I mean, yeah. we're not, look, we, we went through a difficult period of time and people don't understand this. When, when I joined the company in 2011, I had nine guys in development, nine mm-hmm. guys. Right. So, so yeah, did, did we, it, did it take us a long time to finish the games uh, from in that era? It did. It absolutely did longer than we wanted, mm-hmm. but we're, we're at a place now where we usually ship you. We seldom ship you less than, Bond would have shipped. Bond would, probably would have shipped a dot eight five dot nine something like that, had we not bumped into a lot of licensing stuff at the eleventh hour, and we did. We yeah. we're ready to go with much more content, and and man, this landed on our heads, and we we're like, okay, we can't do can't do it this way. We have to change how we do it, and and we took a step back, and so it's you know, unfortunately, we've given you we've shipped you with you know dot seven. Mm-hmm. Um, we're about to give you a bunch more stuff. Hopefully, here we're trying to do this drop before Christmas. If we get you know, if we get if we get our all approval ducks in a row, um, but I, but I think that that uh, I guarantee you that you know the the magic here at, in we're at the point where right now we're adding content to the game, which will inherently brings more fun to the game. But there's a step beyond that, which is let's polish this thing. Yeah. Right. What what you see in a Deadpool, which no one realizes. Deadpool's got a crap load of polish. It's not about a crap load of content. It's yep. about a crap load of polish. What's there is pretty, you know, it's pretty tightly worked. And we paid attention to a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it, it that's the part that that's the part that gets lost. Everybody wants more, 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 more. You know what? More half ass doesn't mean anything yeah. to you. Yeah. More modes. If the modes aren't fun, that's no good. Like you gotta, and, and that's what I know stands out about Deadpool is it's, it's, it's a funny game. Like there's the humor in it. The music is great. The light shows are great. Not to mention the rules and the codes and the mode you're doing. And and honestly, I can't, I can't sort of, I can't understate, understate the notion that when you give us freedom, yeah, which in in the particular case of Marvel, uh, they did. Mm-hmm. When you give us freedom, you, you you get a lot of stuff that is really cool because we start thinking outside of the realm of, you know, a, a particular channel. So in Deadpool, one of the things that brought the fun to the game was that every day we were like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, so hey, let's do let's do a bunch of crazy music yeah that it's all about deadpool being deadpool and it's all about i'm deadpool and i'm you know i'm me and i'm i'm crazy and all and and just have fun with it so like all these different music genres all this stuff and that's a crazy idea that didn't you know doesn't exist in the marvel universe it's just like we just made it up right so it's like and then you know it's like Okay, this is the set of characters you get to work with. Okay, great. Let's make them as random and and let's try to be true to the you know true to the characters, but in, in, as random in feeling you know the, as as they can be. You know, let's play up all of the elements of the characters. Right, the 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 sort of that uncomfortable rivalry between Wolverine and Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. Right. The yeah. the the you know the you know Deadpool's uh, you know his loves his you know his foes, the whole thing. Right. So it's like, just let's just make stuff up little Deadpool. I mean, yeah. there's two pages yeah. and the, yeah. you know, there, there, there's two or three pages in, in, in the dead, in the pantheon of Deadpool that, that have little Deadpool. And and we said, Oh, we could, let's do this. Let's turn this camera. And it's like, yeah. You know? And I mean, honestly, when we went to back to Marvel with that, Marvel was like, 
what is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we had Roman Zeke. Okay, page two of yep. volume, you know, like, oh, that guy? You yeah. Know? So. Well, with that, I remember when we talked about Deadpool before, that was the my main takeaway is when, when, when you have a licensor that gives you the freedom to do what you want, you guys are incredibly creative people and you can run with it. What yeah. is, do you, is there any appeal at Stern to do an unlicensed theme then? Or like, I know other manufacturers it's think it's the greatest thing ever to do an unlicensed game. And it's really hard. It, it be, only because it, are we going to go there again? Probably, you know, we'll do one at some point in time. You'll see one from us. But mm-hmm. I think that, I think that, that one of the most difficult things about it is that is that what you get with a license is sort of, instant audience recognition exactly you're appealing yeah. to you're appealing to a certain segment of the demographic i'm having a conversation with say okay my game is about a guy and a girl they stole a car they drive it across the country and and they run into all these different scenarios along the way and yeah. and i was like and okay what is that i have to i have to somehow figure out a way to construct that story convey it to you and tell it to you in such a way that it's compelling to you and not that it's not undoable. It is doable. Sure. It, it It's just that, um, you know, it's just that it's a lot different than, you know, uh, the number of people in the world that know who Deadpool is. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. was like, like, hey, it's Deadpool. OK, oh, yeah. I got it. Hey, it's James Bond. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I totally. I totally. I just assume as a designer, that's got to be awesome to have that complete freedom. But I also understand from your entire sales department. That's probably terrifying because well, some yeah. of these games sell themselves based Gary on used to say, yeah. You know, Gary used to say if he talks, you know, if he talks to the distributorship and and he said or the you know the whatever, the French distributor, and he says, he's I got a guy, I got I got a I got a game about a guy and a girl, they stole a car in in, in LA and they're driving it to New York, and all here's all the things that happen along the way. The distributor says you know, send me two and I'll test them. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. You, you call the distribu- same distributor. You say, "I got James Bond." The distributor writes you a check for five million bucks. Yeah, you know? yeah <laughs> So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. you know, I mean, I totally like, get it, right? Well, <laughs> I only have two more questions for you, and one would be: You are, I know you read Facebook. I know you you hop in every once in a yeah. while. And you comment on things, which is incredible to see a yeah. designer or somebody in your place at Stern answer direct questions is awesome. Yeah. So, is there uh, any particular comment that you've read or continue to read over and over and over again? Is there anything specific that you'd like, just like to clarify or just kind of get out there? Uh, well, a couple of things, but but let me explain to you what that's about. Sure. Uh, so I'm an officer of the company. Okay. And I'm allowed to speak on, you know, I'm allowed to to make those posts and 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 have those conversations as as an officer of the company because the company trusts me to say things that are consistent with the vision of the company. Okay. My staff is not allowed to do that. Gotcha. So uh, my guys are not supposed to be doing that. Okay. Every once in a while, someone may you know help somebody with something specific or you know, but but the the our policy typically is that you know you, you you only certain people in the company can express an opinion that way because that opinion can be construed as an opinion of the company. Gotcha. And so I mean it's just a functional thing. If you go to you know any big company or any any you know it, it has similar uh, things. So you you know you not know that the, it, when when Ray posts uh, I want to hear about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, yeah. no, but I think I think uh, those guys, you know, they, they they're allowed to have a, a you know a, a life in the community because they are part of the community. It's just that that you know they have to be more careful with oh, what yeah. it is that how they express an opinion. All right, so here's something I want to clarify, uh, which which people did not. I I, I should have been more uh, clearer when I when I did super awesome po- uh, uh, when I did the super awesome show. Um, uh, you know, with, with those guys, one of the things that, one of the questions they asked me was, you know, when are we getting home leaderboards, home leaderboards is the thing I'm asked about almost daily. And so it's kind of like, yes, you're getting home leaderboards. Let me, let me tell you why you don't have it. Yes. So I said, okay, operators want features that are unique to operators. And, and that is related 
to the notion that I see is a new thing. And, mm-hmm. and, and I see has to exist in lots of worlds. And, and one of the worlds that we want I see to be successful in is we want to be able to tell people, look, here's a tool for you to drive location loyalty, location play, to help you run your business. And, and, and that tool has nothing to do with what's happening. Yeah. With, you know, so we've tried to balance the feature set so that, and some of the things that make sense in the operation environment don't necessarily make sense in home. That's not home. We don't, it's not that we believe that, that, that leaderboards is that thing, but there's a complexity with those two environments. And that complexity is the fact that beyond the fact that operators want them right now because yeah. that's a thing that they can use uh at when when their tool set is is pretty light because they, they actually have fewer things at this point in time than the community has and so they're saying hey give me something give me something to work with and and we're going to give them you know we're going to give them this and that and the other thing as their as their system becomes their side of the system becomes more robust we'll be able to do more things in the home but there's another problem with with the home stuff it's like and this was this was a part that people misconstrued. I said, there are no technical challenges to giving you the leaderboards in a home. And that's because they work in a very similar fashion. Okay. What doesn't work in a very similar fashion are privacy issues and security issues. Oh, okay. 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 So, yeah. so now you would ask, you would say to yourself, privacy and security in the home inherently seems like, like it would be tougher to do that in a commercial environment rather than the consumer environment. That's not necessarily the case. When you're in a con- when you're in a commercial environment, inherently you have given up certain rights by your by the very nature that you are there, that interacting with those products in that way, you have consented yeah. to cer- certain things, right? In the home, it's a little different, and there are a, a whole myriad of complexities, such as when people come over to your house and they show up on your leaderboards. Have they gone through some permission process to be on your leaderboard? Where is your leaderboard pub- published, <laughs> et cetera? So, look, we we spent a lot of money with a law firm when we were building IC to make sure that we were on the right side of everything. Okay. And 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 we're going to continue to spend that money because we have to, right? So, and and the same thing with the security, you know, with the security company and security issues relative to the internet and the fact that I have that many more points of of contact when it goes into a consumer environment than when it is in a commercial environment. And those points of contact, by the way, in a, in a consumer environment are less controlled than they are in a commercial environment. Yeah. So huh. I have security issues. I have, uh, I have privacy issues and I have to be compliant. And so I will, we will solve the problem. Trust me, it's not an unsolvable problem and we are going to solve the problem. And, and, you know, you'll probably see, you know, see home leaderboards in 23. So, I wanted to clear that up because no, no, as soon perfect. as I said yeah. it, man, I mean, it was like, I was like, wow. It's like, and I honestly, it's like I said, I, what, what everybody missed, I said, nobody paid attention to this part. I said, there are some business side yeah. decisions that have to be made. Those are the business side decisions, Yeah, privacy and security. We have to have all those ducks in a row. And then we can have them. Nobody heard that. All they heard was, <laughs> it's, coming. It's, it's technically feasible. Yeah. Yeah. And he's all he's doing is keeping yeah. them from him because he's an operator. So, yeah. like, whoa, 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 time out. So it's like, never occurred to me that people were going to con- you know, misconstrue it that way. But that's all right. I mean, it's like, what, no, whatever. No, I'm here to explain it. Here there it you is. Go. I think that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, you'll get them. You'll probably get them in 23. They'll, you know, but. That there are there are challenges and and they're not as simple as you think they are. Yeah, you're not just flipping a switch uh, that you purposely are holding back just to make operators happy. No, nope. yeah, I get it. Well, so my last question then would be for 2022. What would yep. you say has been your George Gomez's proudest moment in pinball or four turn <sighs> pinball in 2022? And then what are you most looking forward to in 2023? Wow, that's tough. Uh, I mean, you know what? I'm I'm proud of what the company did. Um, that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of what the company did. We continue to grow yep. in a very difficult environment. Um, in in a, in a difficult uh, you know environment in so many different ways, with challenges and you know challenges to every part of our business, manufacturing, 
every every single part of our business was challenged and 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 we we're going to have another record year and 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 I'm proud of that and yeah. and I you know I think that you know you you guys don't see the part where it, this leadership team has to make really hard decisions have to do things have to you know basically think on their feet fix problems move I mean it's react uh, uh so I think I think that's the stuff you know I'm I'm most proud of is like the growth of of Strum Pinball in 2022 in an incredibly challenging environment uh from every you know uh in every way I'm proud of that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh what was the other half of your question? 2023. I what's coming 2023 up that you are, what's coming up and What are and, you excited about? I mean I think I, I think you know for me it goes back to something very similar right that that you know 2023 we're moving into a new you know in, into a new facility and you know new opportunities new challenges yeah. I've, we've got um the two you know the, the two game I'm I think I think you're going to love the two games that you see mm -hmm. in in uh in 23 uh um uh Jack's game and Brian's game, yeah. uh, you know, J uh, Jack and Tanya, Brian and Dwight. Um, um, they've got some really cool stuff. I played, I, I, I'm telling you that I spent, uh, you know, 20 minutes flipping Brian and, 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 and Dwight's game today. And I had a gas and awesome. I mean, it's like, it was so really awesome. And, and they've got some cool, they've got some really, really cool stuff. Uh, Tanya and Jack's game is going to, uh, is equally, it's, thematically it's going to blow your socks off <laughs> nice. how's that nice so i think yeah. it's something um it it's 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 a it's a move in a different direction for us and okay. so you're you know you i think i think you're gonna and by the way that's it you know that that's a, a um you know that's that includes mr yeti also so Ooh, you know okay cannot be discounted uh and so you have um um, yeah, you have, you have a lot of strength there and, and that, that's going to be very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, there was no Brian Eddie this year or not Brian Eddie. There was no zombie Yeti. There was no zombie Yeti this year. Yeah. Um, in art. Well, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting full metal jacket zombie Yeti next year. Cause I'm you got, excited. you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. You got him on, you got, you got him on, on both. both products. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. wait. I mean, that's, I didn't realize it until I was just looking at my collection and I'm like, crap, I got Deadpool, Turtles, and Godzilla. Like, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That yeah, guy, yeah, for sure. That guy's decent at art. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wait till, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. He's, he, I can't say enough about that guy. He's awesome. And, and the, the stuff that, you know what? The work ethic oh, yeah. is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, it's like nobody really understands this guy lives his craft. Yeah, and, he's drawing uh, all the time. He is a craftsman. I mean, I, I, I mean, honest to God, yeah, he just lives his craft. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, you, you're gonna get two amazing games uh, from us, um, and 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 of course, you know the you know we'll we'll you know we'll fill a lot of orders. I know you get a lot the of guys games that coming. have been waiting. Yeah, yeah. and um, uh, I think there's more. All you Deadpool people, there's more Deadpools in 23. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's gonna be great. I know yeah. all the Elvira people are letting out yeah, this huge Elvira's, sigh, of, sigh yeah, of relief. Yeah, you know, Elvira's yeah. Jurassic Parks. I think yeah. there's, you know, and and I think you'll see a bunch of stuff and and more Bonds. I mean, you know, like you're, oh, yeah. we're we're finishing up the last of the LEs right now. So I think I think when Jan one or Jan, you know, Jan three, I think we're back or uh, on the floor. And I think the factory's into uh, um, into you only live twice, and so yeah. Uh, yeah, and and trust me, there's like there's some really cool. I we're gonna get you know you're gonna there's some cool surprises related to to Bond stuff that that I think I think you're gonna like and and uh, wait till you see Keith's game. I know. So <laughs> we're all, yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty on the horizon. I know we're all excited about and, yeah. and, um, yeah, I mean, that's really all I had, George. I cannot thank you enough for doing this with me again. Um, I'm excited for your move. Uh, good luck packing up your office <laughs> with all that's yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, like, you know, here, like, I don't know if I can do this. Let's see. Editors note at this point, George tried to move his computer and his webcam 
and something happened where something came unplugged and it killed Zencaster. So we lost audio for a second, but through a little bit of troubleshooting, we got it all fired back up. Um, what is different though, is his audio is not nearly as good. So this last little bit, sorry, but his audio is not nearly as good quality. And, um, yeah, we're just going to go from here. So back to the show. All right. So we had a little technical difficulty there. Apparently when you moved yeah. the camera, I was it killed to, audio. I, I was, yeah. I was, uh, I was, tr- I was trying to pan so you could see the rest of the office. Uh, oh, it's just nothing but uh, goodies. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that, that's what I was trying to do. Hey, um, no sorry worries. about that. No worries at all. Well, I'll just but, say to wrap it all up. First off, if you are packing up, I know I've said this before, put all your sketches in a pile and just send it to somebody <laughs> and make a book already. Cause I know we'd all, we're all dying to see them. <laughs> But, um, but no, truthfully, yeah. thank you so much, George. Um, I would love to keep doing this. I'll yeah, <laughs> we'll have to play sure. it again next year. When, but. Whenever you want. Um, I think, uh, uh, I want to say happy holidays to everybody. And, uh, I hope, I hope everybody has a healthy and fun holiday. Um, spend time with your families and, uh, you know, play some pinball and, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, try try not to think of us as as the evil <laughs> empire yeah. honestly we're just we're just trying to we're just trying to give you great pinball machines no and i i doubt any everybody listening to this i mean we all love pinball and thank you stern <laughs> like, and i read some, Turner, yeah. some of this stuff some of the stuff i read i'm like oh my god i was like how did i how did how did i how did i get so evil yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. well <laughs> No, I appreciate you. If that's if you need to hear it from one person, I appreciate you. I get George, so evil. So, yeah. Everything's uh, like ah, must be taking out money. Must be this. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. All right. Well, no worries. Well, yeah. once again, this was episode thirty-five. Thanks again, George, for being on here. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll have to catch up again soon. We'll see you, Joel. Happy holidays, everybody. All right. Bye.